What's up, Sushi Squad? We are back again some more Troll to Troll, and finally, the last of the updated tutorials. Whew! I know, it was, it was crazy, man, going through all of these. So, for those of you that don't know, just to give a quick little recap, uh, I, I got married uh, October 1st, and I am probably still in the process of taking some time off uh, to spend time with family and friends and my new wife, uh, but I'm actually recording this before all of that took place. I know that that might seem a little bit weird to record so far in advance, but this way I can take time off and still schedule these uploads for you guys. Uh, now that said, the reason why we haven't, uh, you know, touched upon the Bard in so long is because uh, we were doing the 35k series and class tutorials all together and then suddenly we ended up having the Shadowhunter update, the Sunrise update, and it just was like, okay, I gotta prioritize other things instead of the class guides, but you guys have been hankering for them, and I know that quite a few of you have been asking for the Bard updated guides, so I'm sorry that we're getting to this one uh, so late as the last class. Now, where does the Bard end up fitting into the game? Well, generally speaking, it's gonna be kind of all around, so Bard's going to end up being a very weird class i mean obviously if you're watching this guide you're kind of i expect you have an understanding of the game and understanding of the character basically when we use our alt we end up doing various different combinations uh that you see above our head so we dash for this one dash for this one and as we end up building up our combo here our rhythm uh we're getting different uh ultimate abilities that we can trigger so the purple ones can give us increased energy uh so that we can have more time for more combos the green is going to end up being the movement speed one uh, and then the red one is going to be damage and then I think the blue one is like healing or something but yeah, the movement speed one you can see ends up boosting our movement speed quite a bit I don't have movement speed on my guy right now though so just keep that in mind and then your star is going to be a, a lot of your damage and then your right click is also really really good and gives you invulnerability frames and stuff generally speaking though this class is really really powerful uh, and can end up being really really fast it's not my play style though just because of the fact that it's so weird constantly having to buff yourself with all these different things it just kind of took away from my own experience but i know that there are bard mains out there that love this kind of like temporary buff like balancing act with their gameplay you know what i mean so anyways first and foremost what are we going to do for the subclass ability well lunacy is probably going to end up being your best bet just because you go big and then you end up getting more movement speed which is going to be nice because primarily you're going to be using this guy for uh, movement speed build and maybe in delves not necessarily a great boss killer but not to imply that it's bad either it's just not as good as a lot of other characters right uh, otherwise you can end up using some uh, all sorts of subclass abilities work better than you would think like the pirate captain one is pretty nice uh, i always use mounted cavalry just because consistent mount movement speed but you're not going to be using a mount too much on this guy so maybe you would just end up using the subclass ability the solarian now just because of the extra light value light value quite literally is armor penetration for end game enemies so just keep that in mind uh but anyways we'll move on from the subclass ability you can kind of experiment uh, you know i gave you guys just the various like okay these are kind of the standard ones everybody uses right now as far as your stats are concerned on all of your gear ignoring the stats that i have because obviously my gear is all over the place but this is this is proper attack speed movement speed now, in the odd chance that you want to, like, you want to force this character into actually, like, attacking bosses and stuff, then you may end up swapping movement speed out for crit damage, but why would you ever do that? This class is meant for speed. Uh, and then for the crystal ring uh, hidden effect, so here's the different abilities. Peaceful moment. Peaceful song buff reduces damage done to allies. That's not going to benefit you, so who cares? Musical master. The bard gains a critical damage buff when all three bard song buffs are active very difficult to try and keep all three of your buffs active at a time and still farm efficiently i know that you can do it i've done it in the past as well but it's very very tricky to kind of manage all of that and to be grinding for hours on end at that high level of trying to keep all your songs at the same time can be quite annoying so what i would always use is overload which is at max melody gain a small damage boost so you can see right here this is max melody so you basically uh, all you gotta do is just keep cycling from your movement speed boost your powered up uh, you know the red one that gives you damage and then the purple one to just keep your timer at the end and then you basically just so long as you are at the absolute maximum melody that's what these little blocks are called uh then you'll end up 
uh, dealing a little bit more damage, which is going to end up adding up and ultimately is the best option. Now, uh, for the banner, you're going to probably be using the Nitro banner. Uh, you know, the, even honestly, this Cube Rooter one is fine. Uh, but the torches from Leviathans is going to be your best option. You know, you can get the ones that expire after a day, the ones that expire after uh, a week. And then very, very rarely you can get a permanent torch. You can get a permanent torch from a badge for fighting and defeating 250 Leviathans. Uh, but yeah, a permanent torch is just a torch that never despawns, so it's really, really difficult to get, but it is one of the best uh, back items or banner items in the entire game. And then there's your allies. So your allies are going to obviously be the magic allies, because oddly enough, even though this character uses a fist weapon, it will convert the fist weapon from physical damage into magic. As if it wasn't confusing enough which character does which uh, type of damage. It's just, I really don't like the fact that they did that. I get it that it's using a fist, but at this point, I think that they should just remove both magic and physical damage into one attack damage percentage. I know that that would take, take away a lot of the grind from this game because you would essentially be able to have one set of good gems. But still, dude, it's just, it's too weird and confusing for a lot of people. But anyways... Let's move on. So Avier is going to end up being the movement speed ally that you'll use and Puck is going to be if you want the cooldown reduction. Uh, alternate options is, of course, Chromat uh, uh, Chronomancer Cubesley and then, of course, the Prefect Penguin if you, again, don't have the Delves ones. Um, generally speaking, though, those will be just fine for you. Food, you just use the food that gives you the most light. doesn't matter. Uh, for the emblems, you're going to be going for Arcane Emblem. Unyielding Emblem is great. Chromatic, maybe. I, I wouldn't see any reason to end up using... Yeah, you wouldn't need Chromatic, actually. Yeah. Uh, and then Sure Strike if you need to, just because you don't have the crit hit. I don't know. It's up to you. Uh, but generally speaking, I just end up using Damage and then Trailblazing just because of that movement speed. For the Flask, Death Defying is just kind of the standard. You can experiment, pick and choose all the other ones that you want. Conjurers is a really good alternative just because you can grind for a lot longer. But generally speaking, a lot of the end game enemies are going to one shot you. And so that's why Death Defying becomes basically the best. I wonder whether or not Vial of Unleashed works with every single one of your songs because that could be kind of interesting. I don't I, I still don't think it would be very useful though, but I maybe it would. I don't know. You'd have to have like a bunch of allies as your uh, emblems then or something. I don't know. Anyways, uh, before we end up talking about the uh, gems themselves and so on and so forth, I'm going to end up mentioning the class gem first and foremost is a mandatory because the bard has increased attack range and bard songs increase effectiveness. So it's just mandatory. But I'm going to give you guys kind of a kind of a base level stats that you're aiming for. Uh, keeping in mind that obviously this is kind of a mid game stats value that you're focusing on. And then as you get further to the end, it's just going to inflate those numbers a lot. So the magic damage you're aiming for is anywhere from 80,000 and up, you know, higher the better. Uh, crit hit you want to have at 50% and up. That is a very, very low baseline just because Sure Strike will kind of compensate, but you want to have a lot more crit hit if you can. And then crit damage you're aiming for 800% and up. Anything other than that, you know, anything higher than that is going to end up being great. Now, I'm going to swap over to my Shadow Hunter because it's the only class that I have a fully maxed out crystal set of gems to give you guys an example of how you would use this guy. Uh, but just keep in mind that even though these gems are going to say physical stats, you would be using magic damage. Okay, so for your cosmic and power gem, Berserk Battler is going to be the damage gem. Vampirium is going to be the lifesteal tanky gem that also gives you movement speed. So it's entirely up to you. Where are you using the bard? Are you trying to use him in Delves? In which case you want to end up using Berserk Battler. Are you trying to use him in Geode Surface or U10, U11? Then you want to probably end up using Vampirium. Eh, I mean, you could always use Berserk Battler even in U11, frankly speaking. But as far as the stats on the Cosmic Gems are concerned, you would go for three pearls into light, no pearls, magic damage, and crit damage as the substats. And then try to augment the light stat as much as you can. It's going to be difficult, I know. But the point is that the higher the light value, the more true damage you will do to end game enemies. And so that's why it ends up being kind of the priority stat of the entire game. 
Now, as far as your other empowered gems are concerned, Pyro Disc is a must because again, you're using this character for movement speed and Pyro Disc just quite simply put boosts your movement speed. Cubic Curtain's a good one. Uh, you know, generally speaking, the only real mandatory one is going to end up being Pyro Disc and then all of the other ones, it's just kind of like, okay, whatever. I don't think explosive epilogue works because technically speaking, I don't think that your attack counts as range damage. I think it actually counts as uh, like just, you know, I, I don't want to say physical damage, but melee damage, I guess, because it's a fist weapon. I don't know. If somebody knows that like 100% certainty, if I'm wrong in that and explosive epilogue works on the bard, someone let me know in the comments. But otherwise, uh, for the stats on all of these empowered gems, you're going to be focusing on... Uh, Two pearls magic damage, one pearl crit damage, no pearl crit hit. The only likelihood that you end up getting over 100% crit hit is when you can start getting max health on your gems, but that's gonna be super duper end game, so don't worry about it right now. Uh, and then for your lesser gems, the easiest way I can explain this is a three by three ratio. So three of these lesser gems are the same. Two pearls magic damage, one pearl crit damage, no pearl crit hit. And then the other three, uh, the other three gems, because there's six in total for your lesser primary colors, is going to end up being two pearls crit damage, one pearl magic damage, no pearl crit hit. Now, as I've mentioned before in all the other tutorials, if any of those pearls end up fluctuating between more crit damage or more physical or, or more magic damage, sorry, it, it really doesn't make that much of a difference. Generally speaking, all you're trying to do is find a nice balance between the two without leaning too far into one direction of crit damage or uh, magic damage. Uh, but generally speaking, you can go a little bit overboard with the crit damage and it'll probably end up having better results. But it, it really is not as big a deal as people end up making it out to be. What the? Someone killed pins, I guess? Anyways, I think that's gonna do it for me ladies and gentlemen So if there was anything that I ended up missing in today's video, you can of course sound off in the comments I'll try my best to end up catching uh, the comment that does mention anything like that But generally speaking you got to understand that as I mentioned previously I'm busy at the moment that this video is going up to you guys. So I don't know may Maybe my schedule will be a little bit more open by the time this video goes up to you guys, but until then you know, at the moment that I'm recording this anyways, I appreciate you watching. Smash like stuff for more. Buy the merch you want to support the channel. And have a wonderful day, everybody.